before I get started, let me pose a question to you. Have you ever lost someone suddenly? Maybe, maybe by way of suicide, maybe by murder, or maybe your loved one vanished, never to be seen again. All of those experiences are very challenging, spiritually, physically, mentally, and emotionally. My journey has taken me down all of those paths. My name is Miss Latisse. A few of you may recognize me. But today, August 21st, 2010, I buried my oldest daughter, Mytrice Richardson. And today marks the ninth anniversary of her burial. Some of you may be familiar with Mitrice's case, and for those of you who are not, I will definitely put a link down below uh, that will give you some insight on her case. But I'll briefly share, but I'll briefly share a small portion of the loss of my my oldest daughter, Mitrice. First, I want to share with you uh, a, a statement that my pastor, Pastor Kathy, over at West Point Baptist Church shared um, during a sermon that he delivered uh, about Hezekiah, um, which comes from the text in 2 Kings chapter 20, Verse 1 through 11, I believe, but definitely 2 Kings, uh, the 20th chapter. He ended the sermon by saying, Your life is a revelation of God's power. And his statement was another affirmation of what I've been running from for quite some time now, many, many years, but more so in the past few years. Uh, but running from telling my story. I've been asked to do that. It's been shared with me that I should share my story. And while a fellow member of my church was praying for me, while she was praying for me, she boldly stated that she didn't know what God's purpose was going to be in my life, be it a blog or a book, but she believed that my story was going to be used by God. And that was a defining moment for me uh, in which I surrendered to the calling uh, that the Lord has put on my life. Um, I told him I did not want to do it. I prayed, I cried, and I said, I do not want to do this. And my not wanting to do this this being sharing my life story, uh, not wanting to share my life story has nothing to do with being disobedient, but more so with the fear of exposing my pain for the world to see, to critique. But the positive side is that in sharing my story, I, it, it is my prayer that it will touch someone, maybe, 
maybe even touch someone in a very profound way to make a life-changing decision. But today, uh, I'm just going to share a little bit about the struggle that I experienced with losing my oldest daughter in such a profound way. If I become emotional, and I do feel it coming, and I begin to cry, I invite you to cry along with me, but I will continue through and push forward. I lost my daughter on September 17, 2009. That would be the last sighting of her ever. Uh, and she will never be, or she was never seen again after September 17, 2009. She went missing, and she was missing for 11 months. We searched high, we searched low, we searched and never, never stopped searching. Uh, and eventually her remains were discovered. Her remains were discovered on August the 9th, 2010, and her remains were confirmed on August the 11th, 2010. And then I buried her on August the 21st, 2010. However, that would not be the day that I laid her to rest because I eventually had her body exhumed and then finally laid to rest in July of 2011. But you would have to know the ongoing circumstances to understand why she was buried on one day, exhumed, and then laid to rest at a later date. But it is my belief that my daughter was murdered. Uh, and dealing with the reality of the loss of my oldest daughter has been the most difficult reality that I've ever had to face. And equal to that reality is living for my younger daughter. And what I mean by that is because I love my daughter, my Trees, so much, I simply wanted to die to stop the pain. And because I love my youngest daughter, I wanted to find a way to live to curtail her pain. I believe I was successful with the power of God. I was successful in the latter, but I still grapple with the former. experiences of pain, victory, as well as stillness, and I say stillness because sometimes you have to stop and just stand and be still, because sometimes you can't do anything but stand. And my divine purpose is to share 
my experiences of pain, victory, as well as stillness. And I say stillness because sometimes you have to stop and just stand and be still. Because sometimes you can't do anything but stand. And I was in a standing position for many, many years. <sighs> However, I feel that by exposing myself and sharing my pain and my victory, as well as my stillness, uh, I may be able to encourage you to share your story and your victories and how you've overcome any life challenges so that in an effort of dialogue and learning each other's story and supporting one another, we can in, in turn touch someone who may be suffering in silence um, and may be at that edge, you know, and about to make a decision on whether to jump or continue to stand. So I would encourage you to share your circumstances as well. Over the course of the next several weeks, I will be sharing my experiences in difficult areas from the perspective of a child, from the perspective of an adult, as well as the perspective of a mate. Uh, in various areas that's related to violence, suicide, murder, uh, sexual assault, and a whole lot of other uncomfortable areas uh, that we often don't like to talk about. I've experienced many of these events experienced all of the events that I will be talking about um, over the course of the next several weeks. These are all my journeys that I have walked through, that I have traveled through, and by the grace of God have lived through. And hopefully they will be a blessing in there for someone else to receive, for them to continue on in their journey. But I am someone who has traveled all of these journeys, and I have been purposed to share them with you. So will you join me? If so, click subscribe below for future note notifications. But in the meantime, please leave your comments and your journey and your experiences below. Until next time, many blessings to you and your family. God bless. If you're not too busy right now, if you can just lift your hands up and worship the Lord, our King and our Savior, the one who died but rose again for us, the one who still intercedes for us. Can the real worshiper show yourself? You don't need a piano. You don't need nothing but to think of God and his deity. How he's absolutely God and that no one like him. No